it's Corey from Hey Let's Make Stuff, and today we are talking about Cricut Vinyl. I'd like to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's post. So what is adhesive vinyl? Cricut Vinyl is, at its most basic, a giant sticker. So basically, like a sticker, it has a colorful front and then a backing sheet. Um, you can use it, you can use your Cricut Explorer, Cricut Maker, or Cricut Joy to cut out all sorts of shapes and apply them to different bases and blanks. Adhesive vinyl works best on smooth surfaces. So we're talking plastic and glass and ceramic. You can use it on painted wood, you can use it on metal. Um, but I have found that the smoother the surface, the better it works. So Cricut vinyl comes in a bunch of different types. You can get removable vinyl, which is great if you're putting it on walls or other places that you're gonna need to take it down. Um, it also comes in permanent, which is great for mugs and tumblers and things that are gonna get washed. Um, and then it also comes in a variety of like specialty materials. So we're thinking like chalkboard, patterned, shimmer, um, there's a huge wide variety of Cricut vinyl um, and there's so many ways to use it. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is how to tell the difference between adhesive vinyl and iron-on vinyl. And thankfully it's actually really easy. Um, when I first started working with my Cricut, they didn't label anything. <laughs> and so it has gotten much easier because right now, adhesive vinyl now is labeled on the back. <laughs> so it's much easier. This is removable vinyl. It has a plastic or a paper carrier sheet. Um, it makes it very easy to tell what, that it's adhesive vinyl. If you have a sheet that's older and it doesn't say what it is on the back, and you're still not sure if it's adhesive vinyl or iron-on vinyl, you can actually peel up the corner here. Let's see if I can do this. Um, like a sticker, right? So you aren't able to actually do this with iron-on vinyl, so if you're able to peel it back like a sticker, you know you're working with adhesive vinyl. Iron-on vinyl, on the other hand, doesn't have that backing sheet. It has um, a clear carrier sheet that you can't see, um, and it's much more flexible. So if you don't see that white carrier sheet, you know that you're most likely working with iron-on vinyl. Um, and you can also try peeling this back, and it's nearly impossible. You can't do it. So um, that's how you know you're working with adhesive vinyl, or sorry, with iron-on vinyl. <laughs> So now you might be wondering, okay, you've cut this beautiful design on adhesive vinyl. How in the world do you get it from here to your project? And that's a good question. Um, if you're using iron-on vinyl, for instance, you use heat. It's a heat-activated adhesive, um, whereas this is like a sticker. But a lot of the things that you cut on your Cricut are going to be too intricate to just pick up and you know peel up and put on like a sticker like you would with your hands. So we have transfer tape. Transfer tape is basically going to take it off of the backing sheet and put it on to your final project. Um, transfer tape can be one of the most frustrating things for a lot of Cricut crafters. Um, I have a whole post which I will link to in the video description on using transfer tape and it has lots of tips and tricks for getting this to work. Um, if you're using just regular permanent or um, removable removable vinyl, um, I suggest just using Cricut's regular transfer tape. If you're using something like glitter or something that's a little less, um, I don't know, a little, like a little more difficult to play around with, um, you can use their strong transfer tape. Um, but the strong transfer tape is a bit strong for just regular vinyl. So um, stick, to the, stick to the regular stuff. Um, and we will go ahead and actually do a project um, so that you can understand how transfer tape works, how adhesive vinyl works. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have a great time. All right, are you ready to make a project? We're gonna do a really quick project to show you how this works, get you, get you uh, feeling like you can do it yourself. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make this really cute coffee canister. Um, I love coffee, so basically I'm constantly making coffee crafts. Um, so for this project, you're gonna need the canister itself, you're gonna need your vinyl, you're gonna need transfer tape. You will also need a green or blue cutting mat, um, as well as a weeding tool and a scraper. Okay, head to Creek Design Space and click images on the left. So I've already actually searched for this coffee image. Um, I'm going to leave the Cricut Design Space number, which is up here um, in the video description so that you can find it if you'd like to make this. But you can also search for coffee. Um, they have hundreds and hundreds of images that you may want to use for a project like this. Click insert images and it will come onto your canvas. So I'd like to make this about five inches wide. So up here at the top, I'm gonna to change this to five. And that's it, it's really easy. So go ahead and click make it in the upper right. From here, you'll see in the prepare screen, your image on the Cricut mat. Um, unlike iron-on vinyl, you don't need to reverse or mirror your image. So go ahead and click continue. And then Cricut Design Space will connect to your machine. 
Set your material to vinyl. Make sure you have the fine point blade loaded into your machine and then you can load your mat and your machine will cut it. Start by placing your adhesive vinyl with the color side up on your mat. And press it down really well. And then you can insert the mat into your machine. And then you can click cut. Okay, so next we're gonna weed our project. Weeding our project is basically removing the excess material that is not part of our image. And to do that, you're gonna use a weeding hook. And yes, it looks like a dental pick. <laughs> so it's really easy to do. All you're gonna do is put the edge pick there, the tip of the hook into your vinyl and start to peel away what you don't want as part of your image. Um, I always recommend going pretty slow for this because it can stick to itself, which is can be really frustrating. Um, but if you go slowly, usually you can get it off in one nice piece. Whoop! One nice piece like that, or two pieces. Um, let me throw that away. And then you want to make sure that you get the interiors of any of your letters. Um, so here we just have the O in coffee. So there you go. And you can see now that we have the image that we're going to want to put onto our um, canister. So like I said before, getting this image from here onto the canister is not exactly easy. Um, so we're going to need something called transfer tape. So here's our transfer tape. It also, like the adhesive vinyl, has a paper backing. So what you're going to do is peel back the transfer tape here, which honestly, it can be a little fussy. Um, but just work at it. Oh, goodness. OK, there we go. <laughs> so peel back the transfer tape. Um, and you can throw this backing piece away. Um, and you'll have this clear uh, transfer tape. So go ahead and put that over your image. This is much bigger than it probably needed to be, if I'm being honest. Um, and try and get it flat down over your image. Um, and then you can use a scraper, which is a tool that looks like this. Um, the scraper um, allows you to sort of burnish the transfer tape onto the image. Um, this will help it stick. Um, you can also, on images like this, just use your fingers. Um, I find that fingers are also just pretty effective for this. So my favorite way to remove any material from a Cricut mat is to actually flip it over. So if we flip our, our mat over and then peel back, you can actually easily peel the mat away from your project. And that keeps your project from curling or creating bubbles. It's um, absolutely the best way to remove anything from a Cricut mat. Okay, so now you can see that we have our image with the transfer tape on top of it. So the best way to get the image onto the transfer tape is to peel the backing paper away like this. Um, if you have parts that, that don't want to stick, you can use your weeding tool or your fingernail to help to get them stick. This is actually sticking really nicely. Um, so there we go. So now we have the image on the transfer tape and it looks backwards, but when you go to put it on your canister, it will face the correct direction. So let's go ahead and put our canister on our side here. And this canister, thankfully, it, it's the same all the way around, um, so it doesn't really matter where I put it. If you're doing something like a mug, you may want to put some sort of um, towel or something underneath to keep it from rolling around. It's just easier that way. So go ahead and place your image straight onto your coffee. Um, I like to start in the middle on a rounded image like this um, and then go from one side to the other. Um, before you peel it away, I want, you want to make sure that it's straight so that you can actually um, adjust if you need to. Um, but from here, you can use your scraper or you can use your fingers to burnish the vinyl onto the canister or whatever base you're using. Um, I just like using my fingers for curved surfaces. I just think it's a lot easier. Um, but if you're finding it's not sticking, you can use the scraper as well. Okay. So we're almost done. Um, all you have to do now is find the corner. Whoa, hello lid. Okay, we'll find the corner and then peel back the transfer tape basically flat against what you are putting it on. So um, instead of peeling it away and pulling it, peel it back and let, and you'll see that everything sticks really nicely. Um, again, if you're having trouble getting things to stick, uh, make sure you check out my post on 
uh, using transfer tape because there are a lot of tips and tricks I have there for uh, helping get things to work properly. So peel that off. Okay, and there you go. You have a cute little coffee canister. Um, if you have any questions about using adhesive vinyl, transfer tape, anything, please leave them in the comments. I know that this can be kind of a frustrating material and I really wanna be able to help you make it work. Um, that's like my biggest goal here is just to let you use your Cricut more. So um, I hope you had a fantastic time today learning how to use adhesive vinyl. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more Cricut tips and I will craft with you next time. Thanks, bye.